Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity seven of the Tetrix Prism Programming Guide. Now, if you've been following along on these, you might kind of think to yourself, well, they skipped over six. Well, we have because activity six is about building the task spot that I have right here in front of me. So if you haven't already done that, you will need to do that for these next activities that we're going through. So um, again, if you haven't done it, I would encourage you to go ahead and go back, do activity six, which is the physical building. So let's go ahead and talk a minute about um, the what we're going to be doing in this particular activity because in our getting started activities, those were all about uh, getting used to the different components that you uh, have available to you within the Tetrix building system, the PRISM and the Arduino uh, IDE, how it all works together. Everything was fairly simple and we were working with one component at a time. Well, now we've actually built a complete robot. It's still a very basic robot. We don't need anything complicated, but we have added some things to that. So that's what these next activities are all about. And we're going to start with a simple driving activity. We've built a robot. So for what we need for this activity, we will need the PRISM TaskBot and you can see I have it here in front of me. Uh, it has to have a charged battery uh, and I've got that at the bottom. So if you ever, if you followed the instructions and built it, you should be ready to go. We will also need our USB cable. Uh, obviously we have to be able to send the program from the computer to the prism. So you need that. And once you have those two things, we're ready to go. So let's start <clears throat> like we always have uh, and let's open up our sketch. So let's launch our Arduino software. Uh, we want to go up to in the Arduino under the file menu option, go to examples. We want to go to Tetrix Prism and we're going to go to TaskBot Activity 7 Drive Forward. Should open here just a short minute here. There it goes. I'm going to expand this so we can see the whole program. I'm going to move it to the side so again we can kind of see the two windows. Now I forgot to mention that if you've had the Arduino software open and you've been working in a sketch and now's a good time to make sure that you save that so you don't lose that um, moving forward. Let's look in our sketch. Now in our getting started we kind of explore the different features of the sketch environment so we should be comfortable with that. We can see in our sketch environment here we've got some comments at the top that basically explain that what should happen is the taskbot, once we've uploaded this, it should move forward three seconds and stop. Fairly simple. We want to go ahead and upload that. So let's go ahead and take our USB cable. I'm going to make our connection from our computer to our taskbot, just like that. I want to turn it on and you can see that it's on by my power light. I've got a green light there that's telling me it's ready to accept information. I can go into my sketch and I can verify, make sure that it's uh, a valid program. It is. I can go ahead and upload. If you see here, I should be having data transmit. Once it's done with that, I should have a green solid light and it's ready to execute. Now, unlike where we had everything on, on the table with just the prism, I've got a functioning robot here. So I can't, I don't have enough room on my table to execute. So I'm going to have to disconnect and I'm going to have to set my robot on the floor to execute this. So let's go ahead and do that now and see what happens. Okay. Now that we've done that, let's, let's ex talk a little bit about what happened in our um, moving forward section because we've added some things to uh, the sketch that we haven't worked with before and the first thing in our setup area of our sketch we see something that says prism dot set motor invert and it's got two parameters in that now this is a function that Paul has made that uh, is meant to make it a little bit more easy to or intuitive to work with a physical robot we have two motors, unlike when we did our first exercise where we getting started, we talked to one. We've got two, and they're mounted back to back. And for those to work together uh, and make the robot drive forward or backwards, 
they need to be going in opposite directions. So to make your life a little bit easier, uh, we've got this set motor invert command that allows you to tell one of the motors to go in the opposite direction. And what that does is when we move down and we can set motor power, we can actually use a single value or the same value for both motors. We don't have to use a negative for one and a positive for the other. We can use the same value and it makes a little bit more sense for that to go through and um, make the robot drive forward or backward. A little bit more intuitive for you as a programmer. So that's what the set motor invert command does and we only need to call it once so that can go up in our setup, function, uh, setup area. The next thing that we've got again is our set motor powers. We've got two variables to there and actually you see the difference between set motor power and set motor powers is that we're talking to multiple motors at the same time and we can give them the same values or we can actually give them two different values. If we give them the same value like this our robot should drive forward straight. That should be what we see. We've got a delay under that. We've been working with delays. We know what that does. The last command here we've got is prism, uh, dot prism end. This is a useful command that basically is going to say, okay, instead of a looping behavior, uh, after everything that I've given you above this line, I'm going to actually exit the program. I'm going to stop and get out of the loop. So what this does for us is that instead of having to hit the reset button, it's going to uh, it's in the loop. I'm actually going to end my program with the prism dot prism end command. Then the next time I'm ready to execute, I just have to hit my green button. So that's a useful command that again, when we want to do things uh, within the main loop, but we only want to do them one time. So we've executed the code. We're now we're ready to go in and actually make some changes and see what happens and see if our robot does what we expect it to do. Maybe you'd make it go forward. Maybe you make it come back to you. So I would encourage you to make some of those changes. And then uh, let's talk a bit about the real world connections. Because uh, one of the things that we obviously want to do is make sure we make the connection on why we might be doing this. This is a perfect example of a machine, a mobile machine that's maybe meant to drive forward. Drive motors could be electric, could be diesel, could be anything like that. But it's simple. It's a very basic behavior that mobile devices have to be able to do. They have to be able to go forward and sometimes have to come back. So this is kind of the fundamental first motion that we had. We wanted to keep it simple so you kind of understand what that is. Cars, all kinds of mobile device, trains, all kinds of things would use this type of thing. STEM connections. In science, we're talking about rotational kinetic energy, rotational torque, or we could talk about that. Uh, we could talk about from technology, direct drive versus gear drive, DC motor controls. In an engineering area, we could talk about differential skid and tricycle steering mechanisms. There's lots of different things we could talk about from an engineering perspective. And math, we could talk about the, the values for um, the clockwise and counterclockwise motion. So there's areas there that we could hit with that too. So a lot of rich, rich type of discussion of a very simple, basic type of behavior. And then the last thing that we always want to uh, talk about is more of an open ended thing. Okay, where do we take it from here from this hacking the code type activity? This is where you have the opportunity to get into that, uh, that code, recreate it from scratch, see if you can change the behavior. Make your robot drive forward, make it come back. Um, challenge yourself. We, we've got the fundamentals that we could actually talk about when we've got power and duration. Uh, we can actually measure distance so with distance and duration, we can actually calculate speed. Remember, speed equals distance over time, right? So maybe you challenge yourself to actually drive a certain distance based off of time and power level. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this when you move forward with hacking the code. So hope you found that informational. Hope you found it uh, interesting. Like we always said, build some robots, have some fun, and come back and see us again.